this is something which has always been China's forte, uh, while Russia has been more the, resent, the resentful vandal, going in, causing damage, destroying systems, um, peddling disinformation. But the two are increasingly coming together, uh, and it's all the more alarming. Give us a sense of how big the cyber espionage campaign by China actually is at the moment. It's enormous and it's been going on for a couple of decades now. I think one of the best ways of understanding it is how China has very much seen the acquisition of foreign know-how and foreign technology as crucial to its military and economic modernization. This has been going on since the reform and opening era, as it's been called. But more recently, it's taken the form of hacking into Western computers, companies, governments in order to acquire technology by just about every available means. And Western intelligence agencies have become increasingly alarmed. And the statements they have put out about the rampant um, scale of, of Chinese um, cyber espionage um, have have themselves been been growing. But I think, and, and the point uh, of the piece in the Sunday Times is that this is something which has always been China's forte, uh, while Russia has been more the, resent, the resentful vandal, going in, causing damage, destroying systems, um, peddling disinformation. But the two are increasingly coming together, uh, and it's all the more alarming, because in many ways, China has a far more advanced and a far more develop technical infrastructure than Russia does. Thinking about this, it's a huge election year, isn't it? Not not just here, but of course also in the US, other parts of the world. We know there has been interference. I mean, there's even been discussion about how possibly China were involved, had been implicated in all of the conspiracy theories and the, the horrendous trolling on social media of the Princess of Wales. But you just think when there is a lot of power that could be wielded, what impact could it have, not just on our general election, but the US election? Well, this is really a year of elections. There are so many this year, from India to America to our own election. And elections provide a rich backdrop, a rich environment for those who want to interfere, to spread division, to exploit difficult issues. Uh, we saw that with the, with the US election. And I think that is why the hacking that was exposed last week of the UK Electoral Commission is so worrying. There were some quarters who sought to play it down. Well, you know, they grabbed a few email addresses. But, you know, this is 40 million voters. And the worrying thing is because of China's development in artificial intelligence, machine learning, this data, you're, they're able to cross-reference it with all sorts of other data, some of which has been stolen, some of which is open source, in order to identify critics of China, dissidents, but also specific voting groups who to at whom they can better target this this disinformation and of course this comes shortly after revelations from Meta which owns Facebook and Instagram that they uh, that that China is the fastest growing country in terms of fake accounts in terms of robot accounts for spreading and decimate uh, uh, and and putting out um, this sort of information which was always Russia's forte but China is fast catching up last week. Um, America was up there indicting several named hackers in China, whereas Britain's response was to sanction two individuals and a company which was linked to the China's Ministry of State Security, its, its main spy agency. And this was ve a very subdued response. And I think that the British government re remains very wary about calling China out. And there are ministers, especially in the trade and business sector, who would like to emphasize uh, the danger and are worried about the danger of, of, of damaging trade and business links with China by being too aggressive, by being too outspoken, too critical about their cyber activities. But of course, you know, this is hardly going to have Chinese hackers quaking in their boots. Uh, it, it really is a very, very weak response. Uh, and China really doesn't respect appeasement. Uh, and we look at lessons from other countries worldwide, which have been subjected to, to Chinese hacking um, coercion. And the lesson really is unless you stand up to it, you call it out and you push back, uh, you're just inviting more problems. The United Kingdom judges that these actions demonstrate a clear and persistent pattern of behavior 
that signal, signals hostile intent from China. That is why the United Kingdom has today sanctioned two individuals and one entity associated with the Chinese state-affiliated APT31 group for involvement in malicious cyber activity targeting officials, government entities and parliamentarians around the world. Kingdom government with a platform to build international agreement on a new global government compact. The UK does not accept that China's relationship with the United Kingdom is set on a predetermined course, but this depends on the choices that China makes. That is why the Foreign Office will be summoning the Chinese ambassador to account for China's conduct in these incidents. To deter both China and all those who seek to do the same. A number of our international partners, including the United States, will be issuing similar statements to expose this activity and to hold China to account for the ongoing patterns of hostile activity targeting our collective democracies. Where it is consistent with these interests, we will engage with the Chinese government. But I can confirm today that Chinese state-affiliated actors were responsible for two malicious cyber campaigns targeting both our democratic institutions and parliamentarians. First, the compromise of the United Kingdom Electoral Commission between 2021 and 2022, which was announced last summer. And second, attempted reconnaissance activity against UK parliamentary accounts in a separate campaign in 2021. We have been subjected to harassment, impersonation and attempted hacking from China for some time. We take this opportunity to highlight that the it's extremely unwelcome. Our discomfort pales in comparison uh, to Chinese dissidents who risk their lives to oppose the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, it's high time that they received much greater support from their host governments. This threat about the impact it will have on countries' mm. trade if they dare to stand up and call out China's uh, abuses uh, is a fiction. Every country which has done that has actually seen subsequently an increase in its trade with China.